This is Frankly Speaking with Muywa Afolabi. Information, education, reformation, and transformation. Get ready. Renew your mind. Reset your mindset with insights, ideas, and strategies for everyday performance and success in your career and your business. Yes, it's possible. Yes, you can do it. Of course, you can achieve it. It's all in your mind. Ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves and please receive Muywa Falabi, your practical career success coach. Enjoy. you do when you got your first bike? Hmm. I rode it to all my friends' houses in one day. When you got your first sunglasses? Whoa, I was so excited. I wore it even at night. And your first wristwatch? Awesome. I swam with it and wore it to sleep every night for seven good days. And now that you're in secondary school, what will you do when you get your first smartphone? Yay! The whole world will hear me scream. Surprise your child with an MTN smartphone for as low as 13,000 Naira with a three-month data bonus offer available at all designated MTN stores nationwide. Everywhere you go, MTN. Hello ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. Hope you're doing great this morning. Welcome to Frankly Speaking, your favorite business, career and mindset talk show on radio. My name is Muywa Afolabi. It's a pleasure to share time with you again this morning. Today I want to talk about your thinking as regards to where you work. So this one I have titled Result Oriented Thinking. Result Oriented Thinking. I have a story to share. David turned up the ignition, got out of his driving seat and slammed the door of his car as he walked briskly towards the entrance of his apartment. Ignoring his dog, they ran up to him to welcome him. He knocked on the door even as his wife Sarah, sensing he had returned, opened the door. He walked through the sitting area up the stairs into his bedroom, ignoring his wife's welcome. Sarah went up after him, baffled and a bit disturbed about her husband's unusual behavior. Honey, what's the matter? She said to her husband as she entered the room. He was lying halfway across the bed with his legs on the floor. His palms locked against the back of his head. He was staring at the ceiling. Sarah, I'm fed up, he managed to utter, struggling with the urge not to cry. Fifteen years, honey, fifteen years, and I'm still a bloody middle manager. The promotion letters were given out today and again I didn't get any. People who joined the organization five years, ten years after I did are already senior managers. The worst pain is that Benjamin, Benjamin, a guy that used to report to me three years ago, was made my director today. Sarah, enough is enough. I'm quitting. I'm quitting. I'm tired. I can't take this anymore. Hmm. Sarah leaned against the wall, folded her arms across her chest and sighed. Benjamin is very hardworking and purposeful. I saw this coming. Congratulate him for me when you see him, she said, walking out of the bedroom. Your food is at the dining, she called out on her way downstairs back to the kitchen. Uh, what a reaction. <laughs> My dear friend, many of us today are very frustrated and unhappy at the place where we work and with our employers. We look at how many years we've invested in the organization and presume we should be getting a better deal than what is currently obtainable. Uh, Perhaps we're there when the company was still at a very tender stage, trying hard to survive, and we contributed our quarter. Hence, we expect now that the company is doing much better, we can sit back and relax and we ought to be rewarded in accordance. Uh, many are upset looking to the left and right and seeing many younger and even newer employees occupying more powerful and higher positions than they are. Many can't handle the fact that these younger employees, whom they perhaps trained, are now their superiors at work. 
They see all these as unfair, imbalanced and partial. Hmm. The urge is there to quit and walk away, but to where? Being out there without any source of income is too scary, so they remain in the organization and swallow the embarrassment and frustration every day. Uh, consequently, they're bitter, they're angry, they're envious, and they daily radiate negative energy, seeing nothing good or commendable about the organization, the leadership, or the processes. They speak ill of everyone and everything and try very hard to poison the mind of whomever cares to listen against top management and the organization in its entirety. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, rising very fast and experiencing frequent promotion into core relevance and power in any establishment cannot be divorced from being a go-getter at work. Hmm. Your ability to deliver and get results on time will accelerate your recognition, your appreciation and promotion by the management. The challenge for many, however, is how to consistently achieve objectives and in fact exceed expectations when appraised over a set period of time. Work environment today is very dynamic and unpredictable. Micro and macro environmental matters influence the next line of action, decisions and even choices you need to make. In fact, at times it becomes so complicated that even with available information, it is still very difficult to choose a smart direction. Uh, often also, bureaucratic challenges, approvals, limited powers and your position at times mitigate the ability to make quick decisions and respond to work matters urgently. These factors, including office culture and personal competence, may affect your ability to achieve your objectives impressively at the end of a year. But do you know that these factors do not limit or stop everyone? <laughs> as realistic as they appear, a few individuals have found ways of achieving and surpassing their targets again and again. Some, I'm sure, are in your office and you wonder what makes them tick. <laughs> Some of these folks may not even be as qualified or as hardworking as you are, yet they deliver on goals in manners and frequencies that are too impressive to be ignored. What is the secret? How do they do it? You know, perhaps some of your colleagues within a short period of time have risen to the top, enjoying better remuneration, allowances, perks, power and prospects that have been so hard for you to apprehend despite your consistent efforts. This reality is perhaps frustrating you and the situation may have left you discouraged, unhappy, laid back and lackadaisical towards work. They we empty and don't they paint everywhere yellow? So they we paint cow and water yellow. Hey, 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 that time myself. Now only call and text messages a day. Now, Uncle, we don't ready to make your life even better with our new empty and yafu yafu scene. We carry plenty better, better inside this one. Now be better when you go to collect more small like a contribution. This one, now see the heart. Just buy empty and yafu yafu scene. Load 100 nera. Before you open your eye, close up 800 nera. Don't sit down. They wait for you inside your phone. I know carry water for more Load 100 nera. And 800 nera don't do your phone. Make you take a call any network and browse as you like. The one where calls with my belay person. I say, anytime when you load credit, don't, don't open, make you begin using WhatsApp for free without any money. So, therefore, you fit to begin the send that to picture to in kitchen or that video to Sandra and we are with them. Day. What do you wait for? Carry can go buy your new MTN sim. Make you begin enjoy Nyafo Nyafo. Frankly speaking, I believe every growth-oriented organization will be more than willing to encourage, motivate, and retain their best hands. I do not suppose they will be willing to subjugate productivity, performance, business growth, especially making money <laughs> for cheap sentiment and retrogressive behaviors, creating unnecessary problems and division in the rank of their various teams, especially in a profit-driven establishment. My dear friend, permit me to share with you an important ideology that can make you outstanding at your place of work as well. This ideology I'll call result-oriented thinking. Result-oriented thinking. This is simply the ability to always see the end of every matter before you start. It is an effective evaluation of processes and outcomes of tasks right from the beginning. It is very easy really to be very busy at work yet achieve nothing. 
Achieving objectives at work is not just about being busy and investing several work hours on assignments that don't touch the core. It's about evaluating the impact of each assignment on the overall output of the business. Many of us in thinking confine ourselves to just our deliverables and job descriptions. Hence, when we feel we have done our part, we conclude we have achieved success. This is not very smart. Every employee, including you, are a part of a process of value creation, value management, and value delivery. Everything you do must sit well within this context of building value. How exactly does your role improve the overall efficiency in managing the business? How do you prioritize your to-dos? Is it based on convenience, your department, your job description, or overall effectiveness? Huh. For example, as an accountant, do you pay suppliers based on their importance to the business or how nice and polite and generous they are to you? <laughs> do you frustrate other departments in urgent need of cash because you want them to respect your position and appreciate your power? Poo! Uh, as a training manager, <laughs> is your selection based on training needs of staff or a way to reward friends and colleagues that are nice to you or close to you? Hmm... As a procurement manager, how do you deal with suppliers? Is it in the best interest of the business or your friends and associates you've registered as suppliers? You see, your result-oriented thinking approach will help you make decisions and choices that will truly improve and impact overall business performance. Hence, you will always be seen as a value builder, not just another employee. Promotion, recognition, and good reward come faster to value builders than longest serving members of staff. Uh, to enhance your relevance and importance to your organization, choose today to be a value builder, not a politician with a sense of entitlement. Think of the outcome of any assignment before you start. Prioritize based on overall business impact. Choose not to be a people pleaser, just to build and create value always. Don't see yourself as too important to do any task as long as it's critical to the business. Result-oriented thinking allows for good initiative, forward thinking and foresight. It protects you from negative surprises, embarrassment and poor performance. Choose today to see the end of every task from the beginning and it will amaze you how vital your achievements will be today. You can get that promotion, you can get the elevation and the recognition you've always wanted. Just become a builder, see the bigger picture, master the business and the processes, see the end from the start, then prioritize. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe you've been inspired by this show today. For this episode and other episodes of this talk show, simply visit my blog through my website. It's www.muiwaafalabi.com. You can also make bookings for your team coaching and your social and religious group inspirational needs via the same website. You will be glad. Till I come your way again, same time, same station tomorrow for another inspiring episode of your favorite talk show. My name is Muiwa Afolabi. Please enjoy your day. Guy, now what for you? Where your MTN sim day? MTN sim? Ah, you probably said drop on one side. I don't they call you since last week now. You don't miss many, many things, so. Business day, I say I call you. Your phone say, not available. I call say, I'll go arrange another hustle. Your phone still say, not available. I call say, I'll tell you, say, MTN, they dash some people 20 times any amount where they recharge. Wait, wait, wait. MTN, they dash I say, MTN, they dash 20 times any amount where you take recharge. Now, you say, if you load 100 naira, now 2,000 naira be that straight. Oh, so you mean, say, if I load 200 naira, now 4,000 naira be that? Sure. I don't jump bicycle, they slip, say. They are the rock and metal now. Guy, they go find my MTN sim shop star. Yes, so If you never use your MTN sim for the past 45 days or more, time don't to come back and begin enjoying plenty, plenty a woof as MTN go dash you 20 times your first recharge of every month. Oh, yeah, oh. everybody don't go reactivate your MTN sim. You still the wait. If you know fit, find your sim, sharply go any MTN office to do sim swap and enjoy your own a woof. Terms and conditions, they shall. Frankly Speaking with Muiwa Falabi, a production of Frontiers International Services Limited, is proudly brought to you by MTN. Everywhere you go.